Welcome to the hottest real estate topics on the planet, keeping you up to date with all the creative ways to buy and sell real estate without bank qualifying, so anyone can build real income starting today. Here is another great show with Dealmaker Bill and Pete the Rookie. All right, here we are at another episode of Flipping Houses for Rookies. Number 88, Peter. 88. Ooh, 88. Bill, Man, you and I are getting old. Bill, that's how many keys are on a piano. How many keys are on a piano is 88? 88. Oh, my goodness. Now what do we do? I tried to play the piano once, and it didn't go very well. I couldn't remember everything. You put the quarter in? Uh, I put the quarter in, yeah. Ha, 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 ha. So, Peter, what? I decided I needed a new name. What? How many? You got? I figured if you, I, yeah, but I figured if you yeah. if you want to keep changing your rank, I want to change my rank. I was thinking about it yesterday. If you could go up in rank, we have to keep a distance apart from us. Oh, is that how? You yeah, know? I don't want you to get too close to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I I decided that my name. What? Should I'm be, catching up to you. I'm catching up. Yeah, you're catching, catching up. up to me. Right. So I got to get a little bit more spread True. in there. Okay? Does that help to make you feel better? Uh, yeah, in actually, it does. Mind? I put a lot of hard work into you. You better get some deals done. I want to see some checks, brother. <laughs> so <clears throat> here's what I decided. Yeah. I want to call myself Bill, the hands off deal maker. <laughs> what do you think? Um, hands off deal maker. Yeah, let Naomi. If Naomi's, no, if Naomi's name, Naomi the deal maker. I no, should I'm, be. I'm finger breaker deal maker. Oh my god, finger breaker deal maker. I'm. That's pretty on. good. I wonder if I'm... that's an acronym. <laughs> finger breaker deal maker. He's hands off. I'm hands on. <laughs> which people usually like they, they prefer that i get here we go yeah. here we go so naomi's trying to tell us that when she goes to collect the rents and breaks their fingers they yeah. like it they like it because she's a girl they hurt like me, they hurt say, me. Yes, yeah hurt agree. me yeah she's a girl don't start that conversation she's been trying to girl us up for a couple of days now <laughs> she's, she's trying to get us color coordinated an exercise program in and now she's talking about what kind of food we should be eating. <laughs> holy shit hey, hey bill <clears throat> i'm with her you know what? I'm mm -hmm. going to tell both of you. As soon as she stops telling me to cigars, she's fired because <laughs> we aren't going there. We know where to draw the line. Hey, my wife tried to do that to me, and I almost divorced her. Yeah. I told her the wow. big D's coming into the conversation, sweetheart. You keep talking like that. Well, the beautiful thing is, is I'm not your wife, so you can't divorce me. So. Well, the interesting thing is that she didn't stop either, and we're still married. So there you go. <laughs> All right. Episode number 88. Name of the, title, the name of the podcast is... Can you trust your ability to flip a house? Whoa. Whoa. Trust. Peter. Ability. Can you trust your ability to flip a house? That's the title. That's that, I was asking you the question. <laughs> well, according to you, I think I can, but I, there's a lot of things I still don't know, but I think I do. You're right. And yet we never, ha we never talk about what the hell you mean. We just say it to me, and I oh. just we go into the next conversation. So I just go my merry way and keep doing what I do. Oh, so it didn't We all pinch. know that. See, see, well, I, see I, I, Naomi, he just admitted it to the, to the radio. He I admitted that you say that. I don't know what you mean. I don't know. <clears throat> if you're going to say that, there's things I don't know. Well, Let's be clear about things. I learned from you after the fact. But you're you right. Deal, you are right about and that. What should I have did? He does you're right about that. He at first. Uh-huh. 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 Yeah, I got it. And then things don't turn out the way they're supposed oh, to. Oh, no, I get it. It's just that I get into things that we have not talked about yet. Pete, here's the contracts for the job. Oh, the contractor needs a license. Oh, <laughs> of course, I guess. My contractor doesn't. Okay. Pete, Pete, learn, you should do listen to the podcast and the coaching calls. Well, I do. Not everything comes up. <laughs> All right, here we but go. But I am tolerant. I learn as I go in retrospect. <laughs> Pete? Yes? Thus, you are named Pete the head rookie. Head rookie. Aye. So head you're supposed to figure that out so everybody else doesn't have to go through that crap. Well, that's why. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he said, oh, oh, wait a minute. He just realized what his job description was. Oh, okay. So here's what I need you to do, Bill. I need you to finish all the courses that yeah. you have in your head yeah. so I can study them all before I get to the oh, job here site. You, go. you have to, oh, my God, we're not going there. All right, let's go. Oh. You have to have before you can do blah, blah, blah. All right. Oh, number yes, eight. Training, yes. <laughs> number yes. 88. Can you trust your ability to flip a, flip a house? So here's what we wrote in the podcast setting. If you are listening without watching us on a podcast, uh, on the on the yeah, try, try it again. If you're listening to the podcast and want to watch us on Facebook because we live stream every single week, uh, you can go to uh, facebook.com forward slash flipping houses for rookies, uh, and it's in our stream there every week. Or if you go to flipping houses uh, for rookies Facebook page on the left side, you see videos and they're all there. You just click on it. There's a whole page of them, 
I don't even know how many we have. We have dozens and dozens and dozens of videos. And there's a lot of information. Lots of lot good of information. information. You know, uh, yeah. I'm pleased to say that uh, probably the most I've heard so far is one of the newest coaching clients that just signed up. Uh, he said he's been watching us. Uh, he went from March to March, watch, uh, listening to the podcast, and he bought five houses. Mm -hmm. So just from listening to the podcast. All right, so here's the description. Do you wonder if you are completely competent on how to flip a house without pitfalls, losing money, or doing bad deals? So much so that these fears impede your ability to make consistent and dependable income. On this podcast, we talk to guest speaker Tim. Hey, Tim. Hey. Tim. <laughs> who tells his story of how he overcame the conversations in his own head to get going and made some great deals. So I'm going to just read it again real quick. Do you wonder if you are completely competent on how to flip houses without pitfalls, losing money, or doing bad deals? So much so that these fears impede your ability to make consistent and dependable income. In this podcast, we talk to guest speaker Tim, who tells his story of how he overcame the conversations in his own head to get going and made some great deals. So uh, welcome, Tim. This is Tim from Las Vegas. Uh, he definitely, uh, uh, he's a coaching client, and definitely when he came about, uh, there were some challenges when we got you started, didn't? Wasn't there, Tim? Tim, there still is too, because you're like in a freaking hot market, right? Yeah. So you know, we were talking about this a second ago, but I, I think it's important. A lot of people think of Vegas as the strip, and there actually are houses outside of Vegas, obviously, to support that. But you also want to think of Vegas like an island. So right. it's about a twenty-five mile radius <clears throat> island, and what that means is just outside of that, if you want to find your a next town, it's 200 miles away. So the next major town for you to buy houses in is 200 miles. So mm -hmm. when Las Vegas goes through a buying surge, when it becomes, when the real estate starts taking off, which right now we have um, major things happening here. Not only have we brought in several major companies like Zappos came in in 2000 and 11 and has built their entire uh, factory here. Tesla has been adding battery, uh, battery um, manufacturing facilities. Uh, we have one of the largest uh, server farms called Switch here in Vegas. So major, major companies are coming in. There's also the even more public part uh, with uh, we've added a hockey team this year. To, so we got the first time ever to have a professional team in Las Vegas. For years, none of the professional outlets would allow a professional, uh, any professional team to play here because of the gambling. Well, now gambling's everywhere. You got Indian casinos. That's not really a big deal. So we have it in Connecticut. Yeah, two big casinos. Yeah, absolutely. So that's not not <clears throat> an issue anymore. So actually. Uh, Vegas has changed. Gambling is actually on the decline in Vegas, but entertainment's way on the up. We have uh, we built the T-Mobile Stadium here, was completed in 2015 uh, at MGM, and it's it holds uh, that that stadium holds 25,000 people. It's an enclosed arena. Uh, and that's where they play hockey at, and they have major shows. Uh, the, the rodeos come to town. Everything that comes to Vegas comes through a facility like that. Um, and then on top of that, as we, as many people know, last year it was announced that Raiders are going to be transferring here. And for the West Coast, this is a major, major um, change. Accomplishment. Right? Yeah, it's huge to have a football team here in Vegas. As you think about it, people come to Vegas just to come to Vegas. So they're going to come to see their own team play the Raiders. I mean, that's the reality. Uh, so uh, we've seen real estate absolutely skyrocket. It's been blowing up really since 2013. It's been growing um, at a massive rate. Last year, we saw areas that saw at least a 20% gain um, on some of my properties even and in the areas I was looking at. So just a, just a, a major push. Uh, one of the 
challenges that when I started on as a coaching client was the arrogance <laughs> of the quote unquote yeah. motivated sellers. <laughs> yeah, they, they were motivated, right? But to their own terms, my God, I couldn't believe some of the stuff you were saying. Yeah. And, and it, it, that, that is what it is in a fast moving market where everybody's looking around and going, I, I can list it with an agent and tomorrow I'll have 10 offers and they'll all be at my price or over. So let's just stop for a second and talk about that. Why don't you give an example of what you're talking about, the arrogance, what they were doing? So just one, one quick example. Yeah. I mean, uh, the, I think it was really just that, like I'd, I'd send out letters um, and get a call from somebody that was considering selling their home. And they, so if you send out letters, the yellow letters, which, you know, I purchased two properties. I purchased two properties last year from the yellow letters. Um, it, only one in Vegas and it took a lot of work. We'll, I'm sure we'll go into that, but the, the typical answer when I came back was, no, I mean, I'm not accepting anything less than full price. And we go over the presentation and they go, well, why, you know, why would I, why would I sell for even discounted realtor fees? Because the offers are coming in at over list price. Yeah, but there was a few deals you told me they were like, it's like a $240,000, $250,000 house. They're asking like $300,000. And you're like, you're nuts. And then a week later, you talk to them. They're like, oh, we sold it. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that, yeah. Yeah. And those were for the for sale by owners. So it was starting to work with for sale by owners and people that called me from for sale by owners. Absolutely. I went and gave a, um, a really wonderful presentation with a woman that wanted to buy a house and was moving out of the area. And I thought we were getting, getting close on it. And, you know, she, the next week I gave her a call and somebody had came in and given her cash for $40,000 more than I was offering over 20% yeah. more than what I was offering. Um, yeah. So it's just kind of the way the market had been, has been going has continued to go um, where it, Bill and I kept talking and had to, you know, had to really evolve the strategy into what we're doing. Part of that for me meant going to a town that is, you know, this one's 120 miles away and start test marking the same piece because I was getting to the point where it's like, I, I'm not getting this to, to transcend, right? The marketing dollars aren't starting to make sense. So I right. test market another thing. And I dropped, I dropped a hundred dollars worth of mail and um, really could have bought four homes. But at the end, because of, of my own decision and time frame of how I wanted to deal with that house, it was still a good deal but I let three of them go that was with one purchaser and ended up buying one that was immediately cash flowing and walked into $40,000 worth of equity. Right. And that's only because of your plans in your life and what you plan on doing this coming year. Yeah. And the other homes were, were a good deal. Um, they were a good deal for the right person. They just weren't a good deal for me right now. And we talked about that on the coaching session the other day, you know, there's a lot of ways to buy a home. You know, you can go buy a home for full price. But does that fit into what your income targets are now and in the long term? It does it fit your money now, money monthly and money later situation that you need to deal with? Right. right. So just tell me this, Tim, how does it feel to actually have the clients coming to you and then you sitting at that probably right at that desk? I don't know if that's where you do your regular work, but sitting right at that desk and deciding whether you want a deal or not, as opposed to how it was before. Well, it's huge, right? Because you, 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 you look at um, the balance sheets and you start to realize, oh, I don't have to buy a house because I have some time. Um, and, you know, I was going through I, I, and still am going through a big change. I was for 25 years or 26 years. I, I, I don't can't I can't I guess the first um, self-employed job I had was the same one we all had, which was Paperboy. <laughs> yep. Me he too. didn't have that one. <laughs> no, I helped. I helped my friend Dave with his papers. Okay, <laughs> I had that. That was yeah. yeah well, Naomi, yeah. Naomi, I don't think she could possibly be old enough to to. <laughs> Dave, Ooh, they were fighting words <laughs> with, 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 with boy tickets. You know the thing that looked yeah. like the sawtooth. 
right? Yeah. So, because you didn't get paid as a paper boy for throwing papers, right? Right, Bill? We do none of us. You got paid for collecting. Paid for collecting. <laughs> right? So throwing papers, you get up at five o'clock in the morning, you throw all your papers. You do that for free. You don't get any money until you go collect the money. Collecting. Yes. Yep. And you have to collect more money than what you owe the paper the paper company. <laughs> well, Tim, finger breaker here would have been good at that. <laughs> I can see her yeah, now, twelve my... years old. Give me the money. <laughs> Your rent's due. <laughs> yeah, but she starts like this. Hi, I'm Naomi. She grabs the finger <laughs> and then says the rent is the... <laughs> Clack, go get your Clack. wallet. <laughs> you think you're only going to give me 10 cents? <laughs> no. Not 15. How about the protection I'm going to provide you? <laughs> <laughs> me and my trusty pit bull here. I did used to train pit bulls. Yeah. Oh. Okay, okay, enough of that. No, so, so, so it's, uh, yes, you know, for... for after that, I you know I did did sales, did direct sales, but I still had a company that that paid. No, 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 no. I can't let you do that. I did direct sales, selling what? <laughs> of all things, what were you selling? So I did a couple of things after that: home security systems, mortgages. But uh, oh, that okay. I, I moved into selling cemetery property door to door. <laughs> what's what's the one thing that nobody thinks about and wants yeah. and then he decides to go sell it door to door knock on the door hey just in case you die someday you know i got a piece of land for you tim do you Tim's bring real his first real estate job i'm just trying to visualize the samples what do you bring for samples now here here's this kind of turf or we have this kind of turf well what kind of samples is we got that? this, this oak kind of tree or this stone. maple tree where do you want to be by this it's, is the landmark it's it's about the improvements on the property on the real estate it's about the improvements yeah what added value stone. could you bring to the real estate deal nice marble headstone <laughs> I love this conversation. We're done picking on you. Keep going. <laughs> it's it's great, and that was a great uh, a great business, and it, and it does seem odd, and it does seem weird, which is great because you know if you if you pick the job that nobody wants to do, then you're not going to have a lot of competition. For <laughs> that's a mindset. Huh? That's that's, that's, that's it. a mindset. That's it. Okay, well done. Pick the product yeah. that nobody else wants to sell. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then, of course, you soon find yourself in the job of recruiting people to go sell that job, which is what a sales manager yeah. does, essentially. Yeah. And so, right. uh, you know, but for 20, 25 years, every two weeks, a check came in the mail, right? Now, that check may or may not have been, um, you know, wasn't fixed for sure, right? I had to earn every right. bit of it. It was my scorecard. Right. I think I was talking to somebody right. about that the every day. There's something about going going to or or seeing that hit your bank account and that is your scorecard sure and so you're trying to beat it all the time so for me transitioning into this and i'm still transitioning into it i'm in the i'm i'm still in the conscious I'm somewhere between the conscious incompetent and conscious competent stages <laughs> i know I'm not Did you get that beat yet i know beat you get that <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> God bless you. Somewhere there, you know, I know I'm 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 just dumb enough to uh, to go, but um, so oh the well we should start a dumbass club. I didn't realize you were you know start a dumbass club. We we got two of us now. Bill, what do you think we follow you for? <laughs> yeah, just keep going, but um, so I I I uh, before I met met Bill. Um, I knew I was transitioning out of my corporate career, right? I had worked my way up through in the funeral and, and cemetery industry to vice president and done some other uh, great things. Um, but I knew that that was ending. Uh, the easiest way for me to explain it uh, is, you know, there's a lot of analogies you can look at it, but I, I kind of think of it like, like surfing in on a big wave. You know, you're you're coming in. You've you've been surfing all day on a lot of different sets, and you're coming in on a great set. And you're looking at the beach, and it's coming. And you have a couple of choices. You can jump off the wave and try and paddle back out and find a new set. But you're looking out, and you're going, ah, the sets are probably just about finished for the day. You're looking at the beach, and you just make that decision. It's just I'm going to ride this wave in until it's gone, until it's absolutely dead. 
And, and I rode the wave all the way in, carried my board, board ashore, uh, pulled off my wetsuit and dug my feet in the sand and just, and just relax. And it just kind of hit that point where I'm going, I'm going to relax for a while and see what's out there. Um, and so what, when I was relaxing, I said, well, I always wanted to do real estate. So with the little knowledge that I had, the un unconscious incompetence stage, I grabbed my cash and I went to the real estate auction on the doorsteps and, and listened to the crier yell a bunch of stuff. And somehow, some way, I bought a piece of property. I, I swear I don't even know how I did it. Lock. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, you know what? Actually, I, I didn't actually buy it off the door the doorsteps. That's how I started. But then I ended up finding the online auctions, and I caught it at just like a little time, I think, where where people hadn't glommed onto the online auctions, and the um, the banks were still allowing things to be sold that way, because since those have been just a mess. Uh, but I ended up buying a piece of property off an online auction um, and then over the course of four months, uh, renovated it and flipped it. Um, it was a small property. I bought it for $42,000, put like 15 some thousand dollars in it, sold it for eighty two. After after everything, I made like $15,000 on it. And which isn't bad for four yeah. months worth of work. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not it's not what we like, but for four months worth of work and, and you don't have a job, what's the matter with that? It was thing? great. It was fantastic. And yeah. your first, his first deal. Too. Your first I mean, deal, yeah. Usually it takes a few deals for it to, you know, yeah. to even cash out. So Well, you made it through to the end. That's the important thing. Yeah. 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 So the problem is that sounds great. But then I went back out to look for that deal again, had my cash in hand. And, and you know, uh, fortunately, I've always been able to do math. And so when I couldn't make the math work again on anything. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, I could make the oh, offers, but I could just make an offers all day, just not getting anywhere. Right. Right. Um, Take you four months to find another house now. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I mean, it, and, and I didn't have a strategy in place other than auction and, and going through the realtors. And when it was obvious, I was going to the auctions, the, the crier auctions, and I had my after rehab value and there wasn't a single house selling for less than within 10% of the after rehab value. Now, these are houses that you haven't inspected or boarded up, Whoa. you know, <laughs> right. You know, that's crazy. And I'm like, I'm like 70% minus, uh, minus costs. And I'm, I can't, I couldn't even make, I couldn't make the math work. So I couldn't find a house. Um, I called Bill after listening to podcast after podcast. And, and I told Bill, I said, I, you know, I, I need some help here. Um, and, and just got started with him. Um, uh, and, and I said, it's marketing. It's going to be marketing because I, I, you know, the traditional, the easy ways, right. The low hanging fruit just isn't there right now. At least that's the way I feel about it. Um, and, and, and we went from there and we started to do campaigns and making tweaks and changes until we found something that worked. And we talked about a lot of strategies. Not only did we talk about my seven ways, but one of the things that I, I know that Las Vegas was very different with is we even talked about the strategy of like doing, uh, the, uh, what is the, uh, oh my God, I just went blank. Um, Airbnb. Yes. Talk about mm -hmm. buying properties and doing Airbnb. Yeah. And even in Vegas is a hotel city. Yeah, so they've yeah. like really like they they've put up the barbed wire fence and they're not letting Airbnb in there. I mean, they're doing everything they can to stop it. I right. mean, we went through a whole bunch of strategies on how you could make it work. Just thinking outside of the box. Yeah. <clears throat> and, like Tim said, Vegas is a, a little island completely right. different. Than and I just want to clarify, my system does work in Vegas. What didn't work was the amount of income and effort and, and energy that he wanted to put into it. And I completely agree with him because it's right. like, you know, do you want to buy three or four houses a year and make blah? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to buy two or three houses a month and make blah? Right. You know what I mean? And that's the decision that he ultimately had to make. But we had that conversation. Yeah. You know, like, well, what do you do? Yeah. You know, I mean, these are these are business strategies, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. So, and, and, and here's the thing is it's the right system in the right place. 
And right. you know what we've what we're working on right now, and the hundred dollar bill strategy that today is is beautiful in Vegas, right? Because we got a lot of for sale by owners that want more than full value. We got a lot of landlords that purchased back in two thousand and eight, just before the market absolutely tanked here. And I mean, when we're talking tanked here in Vegas, homes went from three hundred thousand to one hundred and twenty thousand. Yeah. Right. I mean. It was hit hard. Yeah, when 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 uh, and I I grew up in California, so I was very used to that. To me, it's like that's just the way that thought that's the way real estate is. These markets that just slowly climb at one and a half to two percent a year, I don't, and don't get impacted. I don't even understand. I'm used to big, huge ups and downs. So we have to take a look at the economy of Vegas because of Vegas was it's play money. That's where people bring their play money. Yeah, they're going there to play. Mm -hmm. It's either the casinos or the entertainment. And when things got tight and the credit things happened in eight, nine, 2008, 2009, the first thing that came off the table was the play money. So yep. there's your, there's your economy. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. And now it's, now it's changing uh, a little bit where we're getting some more structure to the economy in addition to the play money. Um, so we'll see how that, that bears out, but I still expect because it's a West coast thing. Um, I see it a lot. There's big, big tides out here sure. and they, they're pr fairly predictable. Um, well, doing some of the things that you were talking about before, bringing some of the industry in and bringing the football teams in, all that stuff will kind of, you know, mix up the, you know, it's not just play money anymore. So your economy, I, I would think it would stabilize out a bit. Well, hopefully, hopefully it'll stabilize a little bit, but I still expect some pretty significant drops. Big swings. Yeah, yes. About every seven years seems to yeah. swing back and forth. The only place we have on the East Coast that does that is Florida. Yeah. Florida yeah. does the same thing. I just talked to my mom who's in Fort Myers and every time I talk to her, I mean, like almost every time I talk to her, she's because that's her her reality with me on real estate is to tell me what's going on down there. And uh, and even though she's like completely like clueless about it, which is cool because she's mom, you know, mm -hmm. uh, she keeps telling me about all the building. You know, every corner there's a building going up. And she said to me the other day, you know, you remember over by the airport we used to go by, there was this little fruit stand over there. And I'm like, yeah. She goes, would you believe they're putting condos in there? I'm like, well, that's pretty cool. She says, oh, no, that's not the best part of the story. I said, yeah, what's that? She goes. They put a sign out front that says that they're starting in the one million ish range. Wow. One million ish. One it wasn't million. even like they start at one million or they top off at five hundred thousand. They start in the one million ish range. And she's like, and they're not even by the water. <laughs> you know, oh. they, they made their own lake, you know. But that's they how it is. They made their own lake. They made their own lake. <laughs> she says they just dig around and dig down a couple of feet and the lake shows up because the water table sure. is so low. Yeah, uh, sure. That's what she says. Nice. But Vegas is like that too, right? Well, not with the water, but it's that's what they do, right? Oh yeah, you know, it just has has those markets. Yeah. So so you have those big flush. So you have landlords that that bought, and and there's a lot of them. They saw the market crash, and now the market's returning to those levels from that time frame. And and so they're ready to sell their property, and they want to maximize their money. They've already been collecting monthly <clears throat> rents, right? So. Yep. Talking to them about coming in and either doing owner financing, lease option or something else and maximizing their income out of it can be attractive um, once you get them past the idea of the traditional method of selling. Because most of those people that got stuck at that time, you know, they, they bought from realtors at full price. You know, they, yep. they were just like, oh, don't worry about buying at full price or over full price. The market is so strong. It's just going to keep going up forever and ever and yeah. ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, it is. How, <laughs> how are those purple glasses? Yeah, when the median cost of a home is twice the median income, you may want to start thinking that there might be <laughs> at some point, right? So, <laughs> yeah, right. Might be a bubble happening. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and and you know we see that in all sorts of markets, especially in the West Coast. I think um, where where. You know, you have a median income in the in in area household income of seventy thousand dollars, and the median home in the same area is a half million dollars. Um, yeah. And you start. Do, That's a West Coast. Yeah, thing. you start doing. The That's mortgage. totally a West Coast. Yeah, you thing. start doing the mortgage math on it, and you go, "This day, yeah, I got to have three house, three people living, three uh, household yeah. incomes in the house." So, yeah. yeah. All right, good. So let's uh, let's just let's uh, back it up a little bit. <clears throat> because one of the things that we've been talking about, I know it's been mostly Naomi and I, although Pete and I've had the same conversation, <clears throat> is the main thing that we do, meaning the people I talk to and the coaching and the, 
the courses I have online and the main thing we talk about is if you have the right person at the right time with the right offer, you make money. You're going to buy a house. Yeah. Right. So this is exactly what Tim is talking about is the right person at the right time. You make the right offer. Mm -hmm. Right. Even Vegas in its in its really hot market has those people. So that brings on the conversation. OK, so. All right. So I get it, Bill. I got to find the right person at the right time with the right offer. So the first question is what? How do I find them? Yes. Right. Finding the right person. So that's where that's where uh, where I believe none of us are actually in the real estate business. We're in the marketing business. We absolutely are. It's been, it's are. been a, a complete uh, 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 scam on you guys because you think you're all in the real estate business. Actually, what you really what you really in is you're in the contract business. You're in the marketing business and the contract writing business. That's what you're really in. Real estate's just a way for us to do that. Right. It's a way the for us to talk business. about it. Yep. The people. And and we need to know how to deal with people to do that. That's yeah. right. Uh, so, so you ask yourself, well, if you have to have the right person at the right time with the right offer, how do you do that? And what we talk about all the time is the message to market match. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, if you think you want to get into this business, what, what I, I don't think, and much of my stuff was learned from other people. Um, and, and I'm not ashamed to name those people. Because uh, I wouldn't be where I am without them, you know. Uh, people like Richard Roop and Ron Legrand and Dan Duran and you know all these uh, uh, Blue Brown, all these these you know very popular people. I you know my own and then my own coaching people that I mentors from my local area. Um, <clears throat> but what was never taught to me, and what I think I'm different at is, is how do you find these people? It's the marketing twist. So what we have done, and especially in my new course, uh, flipping, it's at flippinghousesforrookies.com, uh, how to buy real estate without a loan, is actually go find those people. So mm -hmm. after spending seven to $9,000 a month for many years looking for houses, thinking I got to spend $1,500 a house to buy a house, you know, just in marketing, uh, we've simplified it to very much uh, the message to the market. I didn't say that correctly. Message to market match. Yes. Yeah, so, so we simplified it down to the, the message to market match, and we've kind of done that for you. So we've done the research, right? So when Tim came along, we started talking about that. All we talked about for the first while, the first few periods or whatever you want to call them was the marketing, right? Yeah. Now, just recently, you and I were talking to Naomi. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if I said this on air, so I just want to say it. One of the things I know about copywriting, because I study a lot of copywriting, is that fifty percent of your fifty percent of your uh, ability or whatever you want to call it is profiling, yeah. knowing who the you success, talk to, right? making sure it's the right person. Thirty percent of it is the message, and twenty percent of it is the copywriting, mm -hmm. right? So we spent a lot of time with you, Tim, on profiling, like who who is it. And one of the things that we talked about is because we were just rolling out the for sale by owner, which by the way is the most ideal absolute perfect avatar to find that person mm -hmm. at the right time correct that wants the right offer because if you do those three things you're buying a house correct you find the right person meaning that they're motivated and they're and motivated just means uh, simply they're flexible and they're 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 they're, they're going to allow you to either buy at a deep discount which we don't do a lot of but we do do mm -hmm. more like they're willing to let us pay them monthly payments until we can pay them in full Right. Sometimes right. that's 30 days. Sometimes that's a year. Sometimes that's two years. It really depends on their situation and what we have to fulfill to make them happy. Right. 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 And I think the main the main thing is once you have those first two components in place, the message yeah. to market match right. and the, the message right. that your presentation could be completely awful right you know you could show and up with uh, the uh, you could be dagger sticking out of your head yeah yourself drunk and showing up you know yeah. looking like a slob but you know if that message to market match is lining up which by the way i've done i mean i've showed up at people's houses with shorts and flip-flops on and a cigar because that's where i was in my life i was like Arr. right i mean and, and i bought houses because i had the right message right. to market match right right yeah. And 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 the, I had the right person I was talking to at the right time, and they were just ready. Yeah. You know the house we were in yesterday. Yeah. You know, beautiful house, great deal. Is he ready? 
He's ready. He's ready. Yeah. He's ready because he knows in June when his daughter graduates, he wants to go to South Carolina. Mm-hmm. He needs to, he has to go to South Carolina. So as, as we get closer to June, he'll get more and more ready. Mm-hmm. But he was, he was very, he sat with us for an hour and we proposed a lot of deals. In fact, if you want to know about it, just go to Flipping Houses uh, for Rookies on Facebook. We actually did a live a qu- stream. Yeah, it was, it was actually a little bit longer than our live streams, but we yeah. explained the whole deal on the live stream. So you should go check it out. But yeah. getting back to Tim, I think, Tim, the thing that you really, really, really impressed me with, uh, me personally, was your, I mean, you're talking, you know, you're good with math and numbers, but you really hung in there on their profiling and figuring out who is your public, and you were able to uh, uh, send some uh, marketing out and keep track of it and mm-hmm. test it and know fairly quick that... Um, that it wasn't working and we need to do something else. And that's where you put the pressure on me. It's like, Bill, it's not working. What do we do now? Bill, it's not working. It's not, or I got a little nibble over here. Should we like, should we follow it? Should we like try to set the hook? You know? So, uh, I'd like it if you can just kind of really, I mean, it sounds so complicated and sophisticated, but it was really easy. So I'd like for you to just tell our listeners what that experience was like on your side of the table. I know what it was like over here, but what was it like on your side of the table? You know, for me, uh, because I've been, uh, my experience in marketing has all been direct sales. So when I wanted a lead in my previous business, I would walk out the door, go to a neighborhood, knock on somebody's door, you know, and say, hi, would you like to buy some cemetery property? (laughs) That was your opener? (laughs) I'm dying to talk to you. (laughs) <laughs> no, no, it wasn't my opener, but um, okay, good. <laughs> um, no, it's more like, will you ever need cemetery property? There you go. Real estate the hard way. <laughs> but so, so the cost for that was was very little, right? And and although through my years I had been involved in many marketing campaigns. Um, my experience in those campaigns with direct mail was not very positive uh, because I would see, I would actually see us spend more money than the return on investment for direct marketing. And in some ways that can make sense if you're a branded business, because you look at short-term and long-term sales and the long-term sales are not incorporated in your marketing. So you're just trying to cover your short-term costs, but as an individual in the real estate business, it doesn't make sense, right? Right. Because um, the the sign over Bill's shoulder is not the only sign like that in any neighborhood. It just the number at the bottom changes, right? Totally. And mm-hmm. so, people, which is we buy houses. That's right. So people buy from the person they talk to now. And if you happen to be exactly. that person, that's what happened, where it's going to be. And to, your, to your point, Tim, uh, I don't know if I have one in my pocket, how many times have I talked about, uh, Naomi will hold this up by the camera, um, our card, our business cards, and I teach you guys the same way, is, is to have the yellow business card that says we buy houses because, or I buy houses, because every time I walk into a house, I give somebody the card, they'll be right away, oh, I saw your signs. And I'm thinking... Oh, really? I haven't put signs out in this neighborhood in like, you know, like 10 months yeah. or a year. Yeah. And I used to, in the beginning, I started to ask, you know, oh, well, when did you see it? Oh, I just saw it the other day. And I'm thinking, oh, I didn't put. And that's when what you're saying is so correct, because it's not what they it's who they're talking to right now. Somehow exactly. or another, we ended up in the house and it was somebody else's sign. Yeah. Right? Right? And it's the beauty of the yellow sign and the yellow letter. And some people will say, well, I'm not the only one doing it. Well, that's the point, right? right? The point is that that people need to see something at least six times before they act on it. So either you can Amen. spend the money sending it to them six times, or you can just glob on to someone else's. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna mark that down as uh, that's gonna be one of those that's quotes good. that we're gonna we're gonna read about later on in somebody's book. That's going into the book. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. it's absolutely correct. And I think the main thing is outflow, constant, consistent outflow, because you're right, Tim, you don't know when you're going to strike and you're going to be that person that's sitting in front of them. That's why it's the right person at the right time with the right offer. Yeah. So I'm, I'm good when I'm in front of other people marking out all the positive stuff that happens. 
But Bill didn't ask that question. He asked how it was going in my head. Let's just draw back the curtain on that there, Tim. There you go, Tim. Let us in. In my head, you know, I was in this retirement stage where I had made a chosen lifestyle to pull from the investments and stuff we've made to to continue to pay for life because no matter how you know it's it's amazing how much money we spend it's absolutely blows me away um so i was seeing this extra cost called marketing and bill stuff right it was this we buy house stuff and it was it was running into the thousands and thousands of dollars the first house I bought, I didn't have to do any marketing for. I got on the auction site and I bought this house. And on this other side, I'm now spending thousands of dollars trying to bring in um, an opportunity. And and I'm looking at the percentage of leads. So, you know, in, in, in my mind, I'm right back in that corporate office where I'm seeing, you know, seventeen twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a month going out and our sales revenue are not meeting it. And, and, and it, lots of pain involved in that. And when it's your own, yeah, so that's seventeen or twenty. That's seventeen or twenty thousand is in the corporate world. That's not what you were doing. Really, I was doing no, no. I was, yeah, had okay. a thousand dollar a month budget that I had set for myself. Um, yep. Wanting which is typically house. high. Yeah, which which is high. But I wanted to. I you know I was. I'm not doing anything else. I'm not working another job. For people that are doing this part time, you shouldn't do a thousand dollars a month in marketing. You'll just you're going to lose money on the follow up because you're going to be busy doing That's other right. stuff. Um, <clears throat> so I'm setting setting that 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 target and I'm spending that money and I'm like I'm going to buy a house every, you know, 2 months, but the the short-term brain um, just sees the money going out, right? And for me that was the yep. hardest part. It's a hard mm-hmm. transition for me to go from, you know, the the employee where I'm spending other people's money to the self-employed individual. This is the second part that was really hard for me. Um, besides not getting the check every two weeks, was the part where I've got to spend the money and and have faith, believe that that money is going to turn into money at some later time. Um, so you know, a few months goes by, and then all of a sudden, I buy two houses. Right. right. It took several months. Right. It didn't. It didn't happen right away. The time frame. Um, is the thing that people probably have the hardest time grasping is it's not going to happen tomorrow, you know. Um, it could, it but could, it's not likely. But yeah. yeah, yeah, it could. I mean, we we I've actually had coaching clients where they'll, you know, especially with the for sale by owners. Yeah. Okay, it could, but yeah. it's not it's not the norm. I think what Tim is trying to say is to not get discouraged, to persevere. Totally. To there are so many stories about. You know, people that were just this close, you know, and then they gave up. Yeah, it's like that old story. I don't remember where it was, but the guy that, that spent all the money to go to California to dig for gold. Mm-hmm. And he and he spent all this money. I don't know, whatever it was, you know, back in the early 1900s. And yeah. He spent, you know, hundreds. Back then was a lot of money, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Time. And then he goes bankrupt or whatever and gives it up. And yeah. then somebody comes along and finds out like he was three feet off. Exactly. And, he, exactly. and, and they hit the goal and he finds the vein that's with the guys. He bought all his equipment, oh. bought everything. Ooh. But he, he did he did the research and did yeah. the things that the other guy didn't do. And he, he moved the equipment over three feet and he became a millionaire. Right, right. Exactly. That's one example. Him. And there's there's many others of, you know, just persevering yeah. but we only know the stories of the people who succeeded not the ones who walked away because they're not famous or or the people that are famous don't always tell their story of how hard it was or what it was like to to succeed right they don't always tell that story why they call it wd 40 yeah <laughs> <laughs> ha, ha, ha. but I, I think the main thing is just that emotional intelligence to you set that goal in your mind and yep. you just you know that's going to happen right and mm-hmm. everything else gets set aside Right. Well, I liken it to uh, having a job where you go to work yeah. and you don't get a paycheck. And you go back the next week and you work for the week and you don't get a paycheck. And you go back the third week and the fourth and the second month and you still don't get a paycheck. How many people would do that? Exactly. Then you get a big paycheck. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's a different it's, mindset too. Like if it's you expect not a job. to, yeah. Ah, no, it's a. It's completely different. Yep. So then you bought the two houses. Yep. 
And they were uh, they were condos, weren't they? They were, condos, or were they houses. They were condos. I kind of that that first neighborhood I did that first deal in. You start to you know you get comfortable in an area, and, and um, one of the condos that I bought from the Yellow Letter actually came from a referral within the condo. So I didn't send a letter saying, "Oh, I got referred to you. I understand you might want to buy a, buy a house, sell your house." I just sent the yellow letter. You know, right. that's it. Um, and she called me, and then uh, now it took me like three months of negotiating with this woman. I think before we actually yeah. bought that house, had to keep going back. She was ninety-two years old, and it yeah. was a house that she had bought for her daughter, and her daughter stopped paying her rent years and years ago, and it just there was a lot of pain and emotion wow. involved in it. Um, and it just and she was a business owner, and she loved to negotiate, and she just busted me up every which way it was it was her full-time job you were her full-time job for about three months she probably sat she there nothing else to do in her little rocking chair yeah. with her tea like, watching soap operas like, thinking about see. tim what can thinking i do with tim, tim tomorrow yeah. <laughs> Always maybe i'll invite mind. him over for tea and we'll talk real estate oh i can see it no she'd see that i called and she'd just go and i'm going to ignore him for seven seven days she just writes <laughs> <laughs> for seven days <laughs> <laughs> God knows, God knows she wasn't busy, so she's busy ignoring him. Yeah, she had nothing else. It's all about yeah. strategy. Oh, so this kind of brings me around, Tim. To I don't know why this is in my head for the last couple of minutes, but it is. God knows why shit comes in my head, but there we go. Bill's planet. You know something I've had a lot of attention on just recently, uh, because on the coaching call, we we've been we really, I mean, it's really it's an amazing call. Do you agree? Yes. I mean, you're on the other end of it. Uh, we have, I don't know, 15 or 18 of very, very Talented. different levels yeah. of investors, new and guys like yourself that have some experience now. Uh, but we all have something to share, and it mm -hmm. is just amazing. But I've noticed that there's been a lot of uh, – the purpose of the call is negotiation. You know, So we help you negotiate the deals. It's deal structuring and how to talk to people and you know how to negotiate. And I don't mean negotiate like I'll give you 10 bucks. No, I'll take 5 bucks. Not that kind of – I mean that that is part of it. But uh, when I'm talking negotiation, I'm talking about, you know, actually talking to sellers and helping them solve their problems and making sure everybody wins in the transaction. So by the time they strike the pen, they're happy, you know, to, to sign the documents, mm -hmm. right? But the thing that I, I, I've been kind of noticing in the last couple weeks and, and every time I hang up from the coaching call, I think to myself, you know, the guys that have, the guys like Tim that are doing marketing, and they have people calling them tend to be much better negotiators. So I started, I kind of went down that rabbit hole in my own mind. And I thought to myself, well, what makes him a better negotiator? And then it occurred to me the other day, it's because he has people calling him and he's not afraid of losing a deal. And he's a little bit more ballsier, you know, like, well, take it or leave it. You know, and there's like no must have. I have to, I must have right. this deal. I must have this deal. Right. I must have this deal because he knows a, he's got more than one deal to work on. And B, if I don't, if they don't work, then I just, I just turn on my, you know, turn, I either have my, turn first on sale the by, marketing machine. Yeah. The machine, my first sale by owner yeah. leads or, exactly. you know, uh, I mean, I want to get to this before we hang up Tim, because I want to make, I want to publicly announce what you have done for this group. Uh, which is uh, uh, we, we're testing texting for leads. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll, before we go, I want to do that now. Before we go, I want to talk about that. Um, but the point is, is this, is the guys that do do some marketing, and I'm not talking about spending 200 hours a week and $1,000 a month. I'm not talking about that kind of marketing. I'm just talking about they just listen to who, who is their, you know, they, we figured out who the people are. We know there are certain areas for certain types of deals. If you take my seven deals and break it down, if you want to buy a subject to deal, I'm going to tell you right now, the most likely person to buy a subject to deal from is probably a divorcee. Mm -hmm. So that's what you mark. It's not the only one, but it's most likely. Right, right. Okay. Or, uh, or somebody that's, that's trying to upsell, you know, go to another, a bigger house. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, up, up uh, scale, a bigger house. Okay. Uh, for sale, I mean, slot deals are Fizbo's, you know what I mean? So, so there's different kinds of marketing, different kinds of, of people profiling. or publics or yeah, the profiling, profiling is different. That's, yeah. that's the word I'm looking for. Right. So 
I just notice that the ones that do pay attention, they are being dumbasses and just do what they're supposed to do. Don't put anything else in on it. The ones that do their marketing and have people calling them consistently or have that lead machine figured out on how to turn it up or turn it down, when to push on the gas or when to let go of the gas when you're driving, are the ones that are are negotiating better. First of all, they have more deals, deals to negotiate, so mm -hmm. they get through their learning curve quicker. Right. Second of all, they're willing to waste people when yeah. they start acting up or if they're suspects. They learn the difference between a prospect and a suspect because the only way you're going to learn that is get on the phone and hear it for yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and thirdly, they, they are better negotiators and they're more interested in the deal structuring because they have more to talk about. Yeah, yeah. And they're, oper they're not operating from a scarcity, you know. Mindset. No scarcity, yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that's where you were. I know we struggled, and I know you would, uh, well, your, your, your plans have changed a little bit, but I know for a while there, we really paid attention to make sure you had that deal flow, you know, uh, make sure that flow was coming for you, Tim, so that you could do that. And, I know, and you're one of the ones that I noticed once you start getting deal flow, you started really honing in on, uh, how can I make this offer work for them? And we talked about, I mean, we've had some uh, good conversations, uh, you and I. And by the way, the, the group, the, the coaching is a group thing, but uh, I'm very good with uh, making sure I stick to the guys that have deals. And I was, you know, for a while there, we would talk often throughout the week because he had deals and we had to do paperwork and I had to show him how to do the paperwork and all that kind of stuff. Not show him, but help him, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so like, like one deal we did, you had... Uh, you had a, a house you were talking about. Is it okay if I talk about the deal? Yeah. Tim? Yeah. Okay. You had one house we were talking about, and you were talking about flipping a house, and it was like, you know, an eighty, seventy, or eighty thousand dollar house, and you're going to buy it for thirty six grand, and you want to go raise the money for thirty six grand. And then as we talked and it unfolded, you found out well this guy had other properties. So what we ended up doing in a short story is taking the thirty six grand that we were going to just buy one house and make one profit for end up lumping three houses together mm -hmm. and using the 36 grand as a down payment, right? Just by him and I talking. Right. But yeah. my point is, is, and that's a little bit of an advanced strategy. I don't want people to get nervous and think that's our first deal. This was not his first deal. All my point is, is that's the level that you'll come to when you have a deal flow, mm -hmm. you'll grow. I mean, the first deal you should do is a lease option. That's, that's how to buy a house without a loan. Mm -hmm. it's it's the price is going up i'm telling you this is the middle of march i am telling you that price is going up i've been saying it for a month and a half the end of march that price will go up 200 bucks okay that price is definitely going up so if you think you want to make money quickly and without with a hundred dollars that's the perfect place to do it mm -hmm. the lease option is the per perfect place but in this particular case he started off with some of those I want to say easier deals, although I don't want to use that. But then we advanced into these other deals. Yeah. And the reason why is because he kept pushing the marketing and pushing the marketing mm -hmm. and the deal flow came to him. Right. And the negotiating and the training and all that stuff worked. So at the point where we're saying, you know, have the conversation in the head. To me, the only conversation you need to have in your own head is, A, how do I talk to somebody? How do I find that somebody? B, tell them what to do. Mm -hmm. Tell them what you do. So it's like, how do you find the person that wants to sell a house? And then two, and we've talked about this many times in earlier podcasts, two, tell them what you do. I buy houses. Number three, ask them what they want. And number four, give it to them. Did I do that right? Yeah. Find, I find think that's a little too seller. simple. Maybe you should complicate yeah. it a little bit more. Yeah, that's four exactly steps right. Four steps or five. Let's begin. Yeah, so, so, uh, so first right. is find out who you should talk to, mm -hmm. right? Second is uh, tell them what you do, mm -hmm. which we buy houses. Yeah. Third is ask them what they want. Mm -hmm. And four is to uh, make make the offer. Oh, make the offer and then five. Yeah, give them give them what they want. They yeah, deli yeah, deliver. Through. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yep. So uh, that's basically the formula that that we put him through. But it was because Tim talked to himself and said, "I got to get leads in." And then, and then he wasn't afraid to answer the phone or he wasn't afraid to talk to people, which is the second barrier most have. They think, oh, well, uh, what happens if somebody calls me and I don't know what to do? Well, the bottom line is, is uh, I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm going to tell everybody on this podcast, and I know a lot of people listen to this, this podcast. I'm going to tell you exactly what to do. 
And it's, a, it's not even a secret. It's so in plain sight that you're going to slap yourself on the forehead and say, oh, my God, how come I didn't think of that? Okay? Here's what you do. You ask the seller, what would have to happen, what would have to happen for me to buy your house today? They make you the offer, and then you go figure it out. Right. That's all you got to do. Right. What, what are you worried about? What are you worried about? The seven strategies, you want to get all this fancy deal structure in. Just ask them, mm-hmm. what would have to happen for me to buy your house today? And they'll say, well, give me 199000 Okay, so if I give you 199000 will you sell me the house? Yes. Yes. Okay, so if you don't know what to do, then email me or get a hold or whatever. Go mm-hmm. figure it out. Okay, well, I'll call you back. You have right. a deal to work on. Now right. you got the money guy to talk to. You got your investors. You got your network. You got me. Now you got something to talk about. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you can't do that, then you're just, you're just playing with yourself in your own mind. Because you, you, you're just not, it, it's really just that simple. Now, will it get comp- more complicated just like what Tim, Tim was talking about? I mean, we started off yeah. with simpler deals and we got better deals. Absolutely. But you got to start somewhere. Just start there. Yeah. Do you agree, Tim? Yeah. Well, you just got to talk to people. I mean, what's, what's, what's the fear of failure when you're just talking to them? If, if you yeah. answer the phone and you can't figure out how to buy your home, what have you lost? Right. Nothing. Mm-hmm. What have they lost? Right. Nothing. Right. Nothing. There's nothing lost. Right. 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 Um, the yeah. only chance you have of the only very remote chance you have of losing is if you buy a house wrong. Yes. That's where it's important to know your math. Right. Just don't buy the house right. wrong. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so but I you know, you were talking about this. This. uh is this a podcast today? Is it? Do they call yes. it body podcast? Is that a thing anymore? Oh yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, there we go. A vodcast. There you go. Vodcast. Here's a new word. Um, yeah. What do you say? A vod. A v like oh. in Victor. Oh. O D like in vodcast. Vodcast. Yeah. yeah they like used to differentiate that way now. Now you can't tell. Like you pick a podcast to listen on your run or while you're riding your bike, and it comes up as a video cast, and it, it just annoys you. Yeah. Um, yeah. that, that annoys me. But what we were talking about is, is that fear factor, right? Is, is how do you get over the hump, the fear of the unknown, the fear of anything. Um, and, and when I started this, I did, you know, even after everything I've come through, all the sales and everything else, I still struggle with all those fears. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people will may, may say, listen as well. Hey, he sold cemetery property door to door. The guy must be fearless. And, and the answer I have to that is it's kind of like the person that has diabetes and they, they have to clip their finger, you know, the little, little punch in the finger. And it doesn't even hurt the first hundred mm-hmm. times. But at some point, they can't even do it to themselves anymore because of the mental part of the small, minute amount of pain they feel with every transaction. So that's something that's happened to me over the years. I was selling cemetery property door to door. I was getting rejection 100 to 1 before I got anything going. But and that over years and years of doing it, it was like that little prick in my finger. Right. And it got harder and harder, and every door got harder to knock on. So you have to – so I don't care if you have a lot of sales experience and you think you get past it or you're brand new. That fear is there. And taped on my desk is a quote from Will Smith. Will Smith did this great video recently where you know he talks about um, skydiving and the fear of standing in the window of the airplane. Everything ready. You've been through the courses. You know how to hold your body. You know what's going to happen. They explain every in detail, every second that you're going to be in the air. You know everything that's going to happen. But you, and you practice it. And you practice it, but you still got to get out that window. Right. And your anxiety is, 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 is as high as it can be. Your heart rate is as hard as it can go. And then you get out and it all goes away. Yep. And that fear goes away. Everything disappears. And all that training you did just goes into place yep. and it's gone. And so uh, the quote is, your dreams are on the other side of fear. So that door yeah. is there. And it's hard to get through it, but you got to go because your dreams are out there. They're not inside the plane. Right. 
That's a great analogy. Nice one, Tim. That was deep, Tim, man. Tim, wow. Thanks, thanks, Will Smith. <laughs> yeah, Will Smith. Will Smith. Better than I do, so you got to see Will Smith yeah. do it. He's the professional. Probably just uh, YouTube. Yeah. Just YouTube him, right? Yeah, YouTube. Will Smith. Probably get a YouTube. Fear. Will Smith Fear, yeah. you'll find it. He's actually I think you done a couple of videos video. lately. You can just follow him. Yeah. 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 Will nice. Smith is a very inspirational. Yeah. Yeah, he's a great guy. Great guy. Yeah, yeah so. Sam, um, so so I completely agree with that because so many times uh, I've helped people and once they, like you said, jump through that, that door, that window in the, in the side of the plane, it, the transformation. I'll tell you the first place I always notice it with any client that I have or anybody that I'm teaching, whether it's a client or a friend or even Jesse. I mean, I announced the other night on the call that, uh, is Jesse on the call, Emma? Emma. Is Jesse on on with us? No, I announced on the call. She she's like she's she's like within a week away from having this baby. I hope uh, she, her due date's the twenty third, and or twenty fourth. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, I make my own due dates. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was close. She did have contractions, but it didn't go all the way. Anyways, uh, and, and besides them, I'm going to go back and make another offer now. <laughs> so that was my first offer. Now I'm going to make another offer. Um, my point is, is that uh, I'm going to, I'm all over her because I know she's going to have this baby in a couple of weeks. The baby will be there. She'll get settled in. And she's got four months off of work and we're going to buy a house and I have to get her through some of those fears. Uh, but the point that I'm making is, is what I notice first when I'm working with these people, especially her, uh, is actually hearing and seeing a live motivated seller. That's the first transformation. When, I, when they get that, they call me up and they're like, oh, my God, it was exactly what you said. It's blah, 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 blah. They did this and they did that and they did this. And once that happens, mm -hmm. that's to me, Tim, is exactly what you're talking about. It's like you jumped out of the plane and now you're, now you're in, in midair and you're like, oh, my God, this is unbelievable. This is all the training, all the things. It's so true. It worked exactly like they said it was going to work. You know, why I think people make it hard or think that it's hard is because they try to make deals when there is no deal. Yes. They mm -hmm. try to make a deal. And I was like that a bit because things that I do, Scarcity mindset. whatever I do, you should be able to do. Yeah. If you want to play guitar, you can do it. There's no such a thing. Oh, never mind. Mm -hmm. It's 100%. So I'm used to that. But in this, it is not that way. You're looking right. for the motivated right. seller, right. not the other guy. You know when you're talking to a motivated seller. You know why? Yeah. Because you can have a conversation. Yes. Bill and, they and I said, were talking about yeah. this yesterday, the difference yeah. between it. If you feel like you're having to push your idea onto them or to like you're having to sell them, you're not talking to a motivated right. seller. You know? right. No, and they usually say yes to just about everything. Right. Yeah. I mean really you know, I mean, they I, they keep it going and they're no. You know, one of the things, that, yeah. and I hope you don't get offended. I don't think you will. But one of the things, because we're obviously working and I'm training you. So one of the things that we talked about a couple of weeks ago with you is, okay, Naomi, here's what I want you to do. I want you to ask a question and then observe. Because I noticed that she was like asking a question. She's like trying to get through the presentation. Mm -hmm. She's trying to get them to say, oh, I got these 10 things to say. Mm -hmm. But they only wanted to hear three. Right, right. So you were yeah. fostering them to say, you know, to listen to the other seven to get to the three. Mm -hmm. Right. So I said to you, okay, so go do this presentation in step. So ask right. the question and then observe. Right. And I think people miss that part. Mm -hmm. They don't observe. Right. You right. know, is the person, is that something the person wants to talk about? Mm. If it's not, then you don't just skip over it. Go to exactly. what they want to talk about because the safest place to be in real estate is in your seller's head. Mm -hmm. You know, get in their world and right. understand what they want. Right, not not in your world, which that is my. I've been in sales and marketing for a long time. That's my natural thing, right. is to get into their world. Right. But then at the same time, I've got, I've got Bill there. You have an agenda. And, and she's nervous. She's and we <laughs> we know like there's a presentation. A lot of work has gone into this. And Naomi, you better make sure you do the presentation. Yeah. And kind of like, okay, I better hit those ten steps. Right. Mm -hmm. And. It, it, missing so it's kind of a thing of like trying to juggle between the two and so in a, in a sense i kind of have to say bill i care a lot about the presentation but you know what we need to get like you said into the seller's world so i need to um we can never is, you can never get hurt or lose being in the seller's world right right exactly right. so so to to tim's point you know when you when you jump 
and you and there's and there's like there's there's points that I notice. So the first point is is when they actually talk to a a uh, they they hear a prospect mm -hmm. and they actually get it. And then another a major uh, turning point for me with when I see people and I watch them go through things is uh, just what we're talking about right now is when they kind of figure out that it's not a structured thing. And when they actually, and this, and I'm going to tell you, this is so simple, but people will not listen to me, Peter. People will not listen to me. You know when you make deals in a house? Mm -hmm. When you relax. Mm -hmm. You just relax. We're having a cup of coffee or a beer. We're having dinner together, and we're just chatting about what you would do if you were to sell your house. Mm -hmm. How would it be if you just sold your house? How would it go? I mean, what are you envisioning? What did you think was going to happen? Mm -hmm. You know, yep. like you're, yep. you're, you're just too like, like Tim and I are at the smoke shop, you know, having a scotch, having a cigar, and he wants to sell a house. And I, and I don't really know anything about houses, but I'm just saying, oh, well, well, well what do you think is going to happen, Tim? Yeah. What did you do so far? Exactly. You know, and, and just, and just relax. Right. Yeah. And, and being and comfortable to just to shake hands and say, oh, okay, well, it's not going to work. Because I meant to say that Tim said earlier, I meant to say that earlier, because in our marketing and my marketing, one of the things I tell, and I tell this on my, when I'm on the phone with people mm -hmm. is what can it hurt for you to listen to my offer? If you don't like it, I promise we'll part as friends. Mm -hmm. Cause that's what they're worried about. They're worried about offending you if they don't like your offer. Mm -hmm. So just relax them and say, well, it's okay. You know what? The bottom line is I know I need to make five offers before I buy a house. So maybe your house is the one I buy. Maybe it's not. They totally relax. They take the guard down. Mm -hmm. They don't feel like the pressure's on them. Like you, you're there and you have to close have them to this, yeah. because this is the only deal they have because too many people have been making offers that aren't offers mm -hmm. because like what you're saying, they're, they're trying to make deals that aren't deals. Right. And they're trying to push it and it doesn't work out that way. Right. But there's another thing that is very important that when you, any of us go out and do a presentation, anything. No, she's giving me the clock because the clock died up there I, and I, I needed to see the clock. So. Yeah, you got it? Yeah, we're yeah. good. Okay. Um, Sorry to interrupt you. That's okay. I've been watching it too. I tried to fix it. I changed it, but it's like no, dead battery. Yeah. So um, when you make a presentation, you're not just doing it for yourself to buy the house right. for you. You can. I've told people. Well, you know, I'd like to come out with my boss, my partner Bill, because he knows a lot about this. And if you spend an hour with us, he's going to help you a lot. Understand what your options are. You, there's more options than you imagine, and uh, give you some ideas about the house and try to help you too. You know, I just had you an know? epiphany while you were talking. Oh, good. I just, I just had an epiphany. I'm telling you, well, I that's, what I, it. Just that's what I do. That's what I do. It's not really. Sh shouldn't be called a presentation. Education. Oh. It's actually a fact-finding tool. So my presentation, when I'm talking to somebody, it's a fact-finding tool. Because yeah. my goal at the end of a presentation is for the owner to give me their offer, their, what they want. Mm -hmm. right. And then my job, which is why there are seven deals, is to figure out how I can pay them yeah. or how I can give it to them. Right. And when you relax and you get in that conversation, you break that social veneer, you know, like they're being polite, or you want a glass of water, is it warm enough, are you comfortable, you know, all that kind of stuff. You get past all that, and you get, and you actually start talking to the person himself. It's it just, it's just, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. And you know how to do that. Every person knows how to do that. So, so, so what? You go do a presentation for an hour and a half. I mean, how many did you do, Tim? I mean, you said that one girl you talked to, uh, the house you bought, I mean... <laughs> We were teasing on a coaching call because I thought you were having an affair with this chick, this 92-year-old lady. We thought you were having an affair with her. You're like, what the hell's going on here? How many times are you going to go visit this lady? Well, we did a lot of dancing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, I, I really don't know. Um, it kind of sucks but uh, to do that, but that's part of my – my uh, retirement is I'm, I am trying to keep track of the marketing, but I can't tell you that I've been uh, as as disciplined about all the different factors that I normally right. would like um, right. in my previous sales experience. I, I kind of I think a bit of it is I have enough in that aspect of it. I have enough. Um, we'll call it a mechanics feel. Right. Yeah. To, to know when things are working and not working because I've been doing that for a while. So. All right. So let me ask you this question. Did you notice uh, what what was the girl's name? The the that house uh, you you have a name for her or she has a name Pearl. Okay, so when you I were 
Yeah, you have How a name for her. How can you forget her. a name like yeah. Pearl? Uh, uh, a woman's best friends is pearls, no diamonds. Diamonds. Uh, diamonds, but pearl still. Okay. So uh, you spent a lot of time with Pearl. So just kind of scan back in your mind and, and think about what I'm telling you. Did you notice that the conversation with her changed when you relaxed? For sure. I mean, like I said, we, we did a lot of dancing back and forth, you know? Right. The, the, she was the first person that I used your presentation with. Yeah. So obviously the first day, you know, I went in and I, I had practiced it, but it was the first first time around. It, you know, the first time I've ever given a presentation, I've walked in the home just to put everybody at ease and say, you know what, this is the first time you're going to be hearing this presentation. Just so you know, this is the first time I'm going to be giving it. Good. So you just relax, it's awesome. everybody, right? Yeah. Everybody yeah. calms down a bit and go, so I'm going to make mistakes and I might have to back up and I'm going to screw stuff up. Um, right. But in the end, we're just having a conversation and we'll figure it out from there. So now, now watch this, watch this. I'm going to ask, Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to say something else. Okay. I'm going to ask Naomi a question and I didn't even realize I was doing this. Although all the people I've trained, Naomi is the one that taught me this because I didn't even know I did this. How many times Naomi am I in the house? And I say, well, I don't think I want this deal. I'm not sure I'm ready to buy this house. I, I don't even know the exact words I use. Very, very uh, frequently. I'm not your guy. Yeah. I've that's, heard you, that's I've heard you I'm say it. I'm not your guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look at somebody, they'll tell you, you look at them, tell you, uh, I don't think I'm your guy. Yeah. And this conversation starts like that. I pulled it on a guy that didn't work out in the end, but I pulled it on a guy and the conversation went much further. It's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, it's very powerful. And, and, and I didn't even know I was doing it. And the only reason why I do it is just to talk about, is just to relax the conversation mm-hmm. because it's, I, 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 since you've brought it up, I've been mm-hmm. watching it. And the thing, you know, in other words, the third eye on it to watch the situation. And I think what it does is it, is it relaxes the conversation. It's like, yeah. oh, he's not here trying to pressure sell me. Exactly. exactly. You know, I, I, or I don't think this program, I don't think this house fits my program. Mm-hmm. I don't think we could do a deal because, and I just bring the pink elephant into the room. But hmm. the thing that I did notice is, is it does, it relaxes the conversation and then it gets good after that. Yes. Yes. And then, and then it's usually followed up with something along the lines of, you know, after some conversation and some of the challenges and then Bill will say, you know, we, we could possibly look at doing this. Yeah. If then, you're interested, I have this idea. Mm-hmm. And Naomi would say, we don't do this for everybody, but... Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because your house is nice, right. we'll be willing to, to look at possibly considering but this. That's really interesting because what you're doing is you're saying, okay, we're not fighting today. Right. So yeah. as you do this, is we're not going to be fencing, yeah. fighting, debating, and arguing. Right. Exactly. And I'm okay if I leave here and don't buy your house. Because mm-hmm. I know I gotta, it's one out of five. For me, it's one out of five. Right. Yeah. And I'm okay if you're not that one. Because I got four more to do. Exactly, but it flips the tables where then they're having to prove themselves to yes. you. Yes. Right. So. And when you're working on the offer, don't worry about what they want. Mm-hmm. You, you you ask the question and you see if right. you can fit. Yeah. But while you're doing that, you look at yourself and you say, "Here's what I'm willing to do." Yeah. Right. Period. And there goes the fear. Right. Because I remember being in a house in East Hampton, and we're the guy wants this. Can we make that work? Can we make that? Uh, wait a minute. What do we want? Yeah. And we just flipped it to like, right. here's what we can do. That's it. Because that works for me. Nothing else yeah, works for me. The house and the math doing. have to have to work. Like right. Tim was saying earlier. Yeah. Right? The math is the math. I mean, right. it just has to work. But when you think... when you ask a person what they want, they tell you, you see if one of the offers will work for them right. and you. Right. Not just, well, I have to give him what he asked for. Right. Your right. offer has to work for the guy. If it doesn't, it's not a deal. Exactly. Go home. Right. Don't exactly. worry about it. It's not a problem. Exactly. Go talk to somebody else. Because I think one thing, I know, Bill, you said earlier, we're in marketing, but at the same time, they're the marketers. Yeah. We're the buyers. Right. So they're the ones that have to sell us. They need to prove themselves to us. Right. And, and sometimes people think about this all and wrong. And it's backwards. Yeah. Well, you know, like they I, have to sell their house. We don't right. have to they're buy it. They're soliciting right. That's us. Right. You know, so right. we're walking into a store and, you know, we're not the salespeople here. Right. Yeah. And if they have to, and we don't have to, that puts us in the uh, position of having better leverage. Exactly. As, unless we think, I got to get the house. Right. Don't but, do but that. But they need to figure out how to entice us. 
the because if you think there. about what you're saying, they have one house to sell. We have many to buy. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Why do we want to take your house? Right. We put a lot of effort into everything that we do. So with that said, which is a good point, what we're trying to say here is, is why have the fear? Because they are trying to sell you a house. Mm-hmm. So you're, you're on the recipient, reciprocating end of their, their needs and wants. Mm-hmm. It's not like you're going in there and trying to sell them on something that you want. Exactly. Now, would it be good for you to do the deal? Yeah, but it's just a numbers game. Just play the numbers game. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, all right, cool. So, uh, one more thing I just want to say on that, and then we'll and then we'll we'll end off here. Uh, one thing that I did notice uh, this past week, uh, we didn't even talk about the texting. Uh, one thing that I have noticed about this this past week is, uh, unbeknownst to the two of you, each one of you in private conversations told me the same thing. And I'd like to bring that up now because I think it's a little apropos. Uh, Naomi, being the nice South Dakota girl she is, mm-hmm. uh, was kind of like, uh, you know, we've had this thing about me being blunt and you not being blunt and all that yeah. kind of stuff. And then Peter has his own way of doing things. And both of you have told me in your separate conversations, you know, I'm beginning to get a lot more like you, Bill. <laughs> I just like get right to the point, right? And, 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 and the point of, the reason why I'm bringing that up is, is after you go through, because each one of you have to go through that, so did Tim and so does everybody else. Mm-hmm. After you do enough presentations or you walk into a house and within 10 minutes you know they're not qualified, mm-hmm. you do that a few times and you'll start thinking, ah, oh, I should have asked that question then. Right. You know, I should have asked this question on the phone, not spend, like we went to that one house and we spent an hour going to the house mm-hmm. and getting all of us together and schedules and, mm-hmm. right? Well, and part of that too is he did ask the question on the phone, mm-hmm. which is the owner was yeah. out my, to lunch. My, my point is, is that once you do that a few times right. because you're out there making offers, you will automatically hone yourself right. to get better. Because you won't want to waste your time. Exactly. So the best thing you could do is just do like what Tim is saying. Just just do it. Mm-hmm. Just you know, get through that conversation exactly. in your head and just and just you know figure out. I mean, I, I, I'm showing you how to do the marketing. Mm-hmm. I, I'm going to tell you the 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 uh, make an offer without a loan course is is. I mean, I've had raving, raving, raving reviews from it. It has everything you need in there. It shows you all the marketing, all the all the scripts. All the the paperwork, the videos on how to do paperwork, everything you need to do a uh, four different types of deals: a slot deal, an option deal, a lease option deal, and a getting the deed deal are there. So you don't have to go reinvent the wheel; it's already there. And for like really pennies on a dollar, I mean, at five hundred bucks, uh, I mean, in, in a couple of weeks it'll be five hundred. Now it's three hundred, but for five hundred bucks, I mean, what you'll learn in there, you have to go to one of Ron Legrand's boot camps and spend five thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Uh, I'm going to tell you that right now. Yeah. And, and I'm not even sure you're going to get all of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, the things we're talking about, you don't have to go reinvent the world, the, the wheel. I just wanted to have Tim come here because now it's not just us telling you. You know, it's actually somebody that went through it and, and, and had the growing pains, you know. And, and I think the thing that I respect most about Tim is, is that he's, he's man enough to say, you know, I was really good in my other industry. I was at the top. I was a top dog. Mm-hmm. And then I, and he kept telling me, and now I'm in this industry, and I'm like, uh, uh-uh. <laughs> no, wait a minute, I got to get my bearings again, right, Tim? You kept saying, I I got to like adjust, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah I know the feeling. Yeah, I know the feeling, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so I just want to acknowledge before we go, Tim. Uh, we won't have we're, we're out of time, uh, but I just want to say through the coaching. Uh, Pete had started uh, some time ago by saying that he was texting for sale by owners. Yep. Uh, he he was doing the oh, what we call the opening call, yep. uh, which is where we use the script, which, by the way, you can get at flippinghouses.club forward slash FISBO, F-S-B-O script. So flippinghouses.club forward slash F-S-B-O script stands for sale by owner. Uh, and you can download the script that we're talking about. And you could literally today not spend any money. You can get on the phone and and go on to Google, type in your city and for sale by owner. Go to, it's probably Zillow. Zillow mm-hmm. will show up a bunch of responses amongst other, many other websites. Find a house or two. Call the script, and I'll guarantee you within five or ten phone calls, somebody will be interested in and you wanting to go make an offer. Right. right. So it's really it's really it really is that simple. Now uh, I've got clients all over the country that are doing this, and it works in a lot of places. So. Peter noticed at first that when he texted some people, mm-hmm. right, 
they, they would respond better. And then we started talking about it, and then Tim brought on to board that there's actually some software that we can use, which we're still testing, so I'm going to keep it to myself at this point. But uh, he's been testing it in Las Vegas, and we've been testing it here. And I just want you to know that, Tim, uh, what you brought aboard, I want to publicly – it's been amazing the help he's given uh, on the texting. And he's testing it. He has his own kind of verbiage, and I have my own kind of verbiage. Yeah. And and I think you said, Tim, you did a text. I know we're running long here, but you, I think you did what? What did you have, like 40 – you sent a text out for 42 people. What, what were the stats on that? Yeah, Do you remember? It was, it was 42 people, and we had, in the end, 35 people respond. Right. So you're talking about like an 85% response rate. Uh, right. And you can't get that any way anymore. You, you, know, you haven't gotten that since the 60s when you were knocking on doors at 6, right. 7 o'clock. <laughs> right, right. Now right. you go knock on doors, you can't even talk to people. People won't answer. Right. Well, Bill, if I can throw something, I think I spotted something the other day. This is all in my head. But you know how some people are uncomfortable getting on the phone and calling the for sale by owners? Exactly. I'm proposing that the people on the other end are uncomfortable picking up the phone and talking. Right. If we can't talk, they can't talk, some right. of them. So they're more comfortable doing a text. You know, it's yeah. they're in the same that's, boat. That's when I first, the way society is going, absolutely. Right. When I first started, uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge, 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 huge Dan Kennedy fan. Uh, and, and, and it's gotten to a point where I've kind of absorbed all his stuff, so I've moved on. Um, which, by the way, if you're a Dan Kennedy fan, you should type this name into Google. His name is Ben Seidel, S-E-T-T-L-E. He is an, he's an underground guy. He's amazing. Um, he is absolutely an amazing guy uh, for marketing. Uh, but anyways, uh, Dan Kennedy brought it brought it up that uh, when he does marketing campaigns, because they think they're going to get a sales pitch, they don't pick the phone up. So what his at in the time in the time of his error, mm. they did twenty four hour free recorded messages, yep. and they had more responses because they knew there wasn't going to be a sales pitch. They can hang up whenever they want, mm -hmm. and I think the texting is exactly the same. Yeah. Right. They can cut the communication if it gets too salesy or too pushy. Mm -hmm. So they feel like they have more control with the text. Yep, absolutely. Now, Naomi, you did, uh, last week you did, I think you said you did 16 texts and had 13 responses. That was uh, about two weeks ago. About two weeks yeah. ago. And then we just, we just were, were and I'm not going to tell you what the software is. I'm sorry to leave you a mystery, but it's, it's, it's just because I want to finish yeah. checking it out. And we're, we're t so Tim's using it, we're using it. And what did you do yesterday? Was it... Uh, 49, and the response rate that I just ch checked, I think it was about 13, so it wasn't okay. as high. Okay. But, I don't know. Well, okay. how, long did, so, so how long did it take you to get 13 responses? Yeah, but no, this is interesting, because what she, then, then, then whatever message you sent was different than what Tim sent, so we mm -hmm. should find out what Tim said, that he got 36 right, responses. Right, right, yeah. Right, so this is, this is why I want to make sure that we... right. You know, this is why I appreciate Tim so much is because he, he's out there doing it. We're out there doing it. We can share responses Absolutely. and then everybody else. Will Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yep. Let's so, get all the uh, um, sentences all the used data. and all, all the lines, put them on a piece of table, a piece yep. of table and uh, find the best ones. So, Peter, here, here's here's the end off question. Yeah. Okay? Uh, did you think when we started a couple of years ago mm -hmm. that we would end up like this? And I'm going to tell you what this is. Mm hmm. The ability to have a cell phone in ten dollars could buy you a house. Um, no, <laughs> just just no. Really? Am I wrong, Tim? Just no. no. The ability to have a cell phone in ten dollars, and you can you, you and I shouldn't say buy a house, control a house, and make money. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean that's where we are now, right? Yeah, and we can go so much further. I mean, we're just we're just touching. We're just scraping the surface with this opportunity because exactly. right now we're just contacting for sale by owners. But there's two other markets, which we've talked about, Bill, that are just sitting out there. Just, just yeah. And they're, they're people don't even know they exist. Yeah, and they're people that are motivated to sell and are getting the biggest thing about the texting that I get replies from is I actually have people say, thank you for texting me because my phone is blowing up. Right. Right. And, right. Yeah. and they don't know how to with realtors, with realtors. It's just realtors. Yeah. 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 Because they have a property and they want to get a listing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Completely. Completely.
It was, it's absolutely amazing. Funny thing, I was actually talking to a friend of mine about realtors the other day and about, about realtors and, and what they do. And um, uh, his wife's a realtor, realtor. And he, I said, yeah, um, you know, the problem is, is what, are, what, are we, what are we paying that money for? And he said, well, man, they work hard. They make calls every day. They're out there looking. <laughs> I said, yeah, to find a client. What do they do for the client? <laughs> quiet he just like <laughs> <laughs> it just stopped because everything they're doing is trying to find the client once they get there what are they doing to sell the home well yeah right. they sell the home to the person's brought to them on a silver plate that can qualify right. for a mortgage or has cash right. by some other realtor that found a buyer and it's only a small percentage of the public. And oh uh, yeah, by the way, that other person found their buyer because they had a sign somewhere else and they called up about their house and they said, do you have a listing agent? Yeah. They say no. And that's the only reason why. So it's exactly what we're talking about. They have their clients coming to them. That's yeah. right. Because of a sign on the front on the front of a house and they called and somebody was curious about it. Yeah. Yep. Right. I mean, think about this. Uh, and this is way too late in the show to talk about this, but you know, uh, uh, we, we've been talking about this around the office. I've been talking about this, I should say. You know, when, when somebody hires a realtor, they think they're hiring a consultant to, like, get them through the deal. When, in fact, they're not, because if you actually think about the deal itself, the realtor brings the buyer. The attorney or the closing agent brings the paperwork. The banker brings the money. The insurance guy brings a policy so everybody's happy and protected. The title guy brings his report and says, oh, by the way, I'll insure this title in case you guys screw it up, right? All these people individually are showing up at the table. None of them are running the closing. There's no boss. Right. So it's like having five employees doing whatever they want to do without any direction or strategy. So who does that? The seller. Yeah. And who's the least educated in the process? The seller. Mm -hmm. Right. So when we come along and we start making our offers and we become that consultant, a.k.a. buyer, because we both want the same thing at the closing, it becomes it becomes a phenomenal service. And when you listen to these podcasts and you're doing what we're talking about, the, like what you're saying, thank you for texting me. They're happy. You know, and when we start when we start talking about how the closing is going to be and give them a heads up and actually consult them on the process they're ecstatic because nobody's ever done that before. Right. And it's a huge, huge vacuum in the industry. And, and, and there's not enough of us guys to fill it. So if you, if you just pay attention and you get that philosophy, you, you can make an, an unbelievable career for yourself because that, if you just, you just had that thought in your head that I'm going to be the consultant of the closing, you will go and help that, help that seller get to the closing you will go many, many places you never even knew were possible. It's just awesome. So, cool. All right, Tim, thank you so much. Uh, it's not only that you were here, but you're in Vegas and we're in Connecticut, so you had to get up early this morning, which I know you normally do. Uh, and uh, we had to, we had to uh, drag you. Well, we didn't have to drag you. You're willing. Uh, but you weren't allowed to do it with your tank top on. I know that. We had to get you actually put your shirt on and get dressed at six thirty in the morning. <laughs> you kept the sun's coming up today, so yeah, oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, you can the sun's it. coming up behind you, yeah. That's a little classy. So, uh, yeah. So, thank you very, very much. I hope yes. uh, I hope the guys on the call, the listeners, uh, appreciate it. I think they do. I know I did. I enjoyed the call. Yeah. Yes. It was really good. Your information's really good. Uh, different perspective is really good. Uh, and I really appreciate all the the help you have uh, the help you have in our group. Uh, we just started doing uh, WhatsApp about a month ago, and now the guys, the coaching guys, are helping one another. So it's not just me anymore. The coaching is not just me telling people what to do. It's you guys like yourself that are in there, and Naomi and Pete and Kyle and all these other people, Jesse. Uh, are helping one another with the WhatsApp when they're making meeting deals. Of the minds. It is totally yeah. a meeting of the minds. It's it's a complete mastermind mm -hmm. atmosphere, uh, and I really appreciate all that effort that you uh, that you put into it. I, I know you may not think it's effort, but uh, you, what you bring to the table is a lot to the group. It's a lot to all of us, and what you did today for the listeners is just phenomenal. So thank you very much for your time. 
Thank you for helping. Thank you for getting up early this morning. Blah, blah, blah. You got it? Got it. So all thank right. you. Uh, all right, guys. So we're going to bug out. Uh, the only thing I can tell you is if you want any information from us, just go to flippinghousesforrookies.com. Uh, Emma is pretty damn close to having everything on one website now. So we're going to stop talking about the other website a little at a time. So all you need to do is go to flippinghousesforrookies.com. You'll find episodes for this podcast there. You'll find uh, free videos. All the courses are there. Everything's in one spot. It's a very easy, easy and simple website to use. So just go to flippinghousesforrookies.com. And we're over and out. See you next week. Over and out. Thanks for tuning in to the hottest real estate topics on the planet with Bill and Pete. If you want to continue learning how to buy and sell real estate without money or credit, head over to FlippingHouses.club for some cutting-edge real estate wealth tools. Or contact us at info at FlippingHouses.club.